Welcome back everyone. GR is still on the table here. I got this huge list of things I have to do to it. I'm going to be measuring the cam journals tonight with using a plastic gauge. That's going to be cool. I have to replace the head gasket, but while the head's off, I'm going to clean it all up. Make sure the valves are tight in it, the valve guides are good. Uh, the lap is good in the valves. I might relap those just to clean them up since it's a part, might as well. So subscribe, like this video, comment on it, tell me I'm doing something wrong, and uh, drink beer with me. So they make this stuff called plastic gauge. It's right here. It comes in these little strips, and um, it's just this is actually the case, the packaging for it. On the packaging, there's these scales, which if you put a ruler up to it, it's not 0 0.051 millimeters. This red bar is, or you know, 0 0.076. It's it's actually the the material that's inside of here is. It's like a wax and it comes out a certain thickness and what you do is you take a piece of it come over to your cams here we're trying to measure the distance that it from the face of this to the cam itself because it's not going to be zero because if it's zero it's super tight and it's not going to move so we take a piece of this we break it off And then we set it right across here. That'll work. Then we take our cam cover, or rocker valve cover, whatever you want to call it here. Goes the other way, dummy. Set it on. Put all of our bolts in. Torque them down to spec. And we're going to take this back off. If you look, it took that piece of plastic gauge and squished it. So we're going to measure that now with this gauge right here that they gave us. And what we're looking for is 150 is the limit. And we're at like 051. Cam journals are well within limits. We actually have like 0.1 millimeters to play, which is great because I was kind of worried that the cam was flopping around in there and it actually isn't. Uh, the wear on the rockers, I'm still thinking that's just from high RPM running like the guy before me had it because the gearing was way off on it when I bought it. So that's good. Cam's still good. Rockers are on order. Uh, the rocker pins are on order. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing into this and getting that head gasket replaced. Alright, I got the head off. Um, it actually looks pretty good. Actually, I shouldn't say pretty good. It actually looks real good. There's little bit of carbon here just I mean you, you you'll be able to it's an engine you're gonna have it but the thing is is if you look it it comes right off 
it's real light. I can still read the still read all the numbers and letters and whatnot on it. There's nothing built up in the corners here. A little bit on that face, but I mean even in the exhaust here you can kind of see if I can get both of these in at once. You see where I've already been scratching here. It's just real powdery. So I'm I'm really not gonna do much other than hit it with some strap solve to clean all the oil off of it. Maybe get some of these like real dirty spots where the dirt is, get in there with the pick and just clean it out. Stuff that I can't get with the pressure washer. And um put it back together. This, here's the old gasket right here. She she popped right off. It's kind of oily, but I mean it wasn't on there pretty very tight. So I don't know if I don't know if the guy was in there before. The two nuts that hold these on right here. They looked like somebody had wrenches on them before. So somebody may have been in it and just didn't torque it down correctly. So it ended up starting to leak. Um, this gasket's a little bit different. It's actually a metal, what, three, four piece gasket instead of the compression ones. Which I like those ones a lot better than the compression because the compression ones are, I, I don't know, they're weird. But, yeah, so I'm just going to clean this up. The top of the piston looks fine. A little bit of carb in there. Nothing, uh, cylinder looks fine. I already spun it over once. Cylinder looks good. No big gouges. No nothing. Nothing there. The uh, chain guides for the cam chain here. They look fine. Little tiny bits of wear, but not much at all. So you can actually see where somebody tightened down the tensioner too much and got in there. But that's uh, th that's good. They're not wore out. So. Either someone did some work to this, or it's really not that wore out. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to clean things up, slam it back together, and wait on these rockers. So... Now this is where it gets kind of tricky and confusing. So, first thing that we're going to do is... We're going to make sure that the piston is top dead center. Yeah, I visually did that before I put the head on. But it's always good to check to see if your timing is right. And you are right at the T in the inspection port. There, I think you can see it there. So now we're at top dead center. So when we'll put the cam in... We're going to put the cam in with, there's actually paint on it, and the cam sprocket has paint on it, and you can tell where it needs to be. You take note of it when you take it out, but when you put it back in, there's a couple of simple things you can do. Okay, so we have this little hole, which a bolt won't fit in. Can't fit a bolt in that hole, it goes in this hole here. So that's the bolt for the pin on the crank. We're lined with this hole, and our lines right here are level, or level with the case. And we have the painted slash T mark in the center of the hole. So we're timed. All we have to do now is put the, the bolts in the sprocket there, hammer down the keeper, and put the valve cover on but I don't have the rockers yet so got to put the exhaust on uh, I'm not going to tighten the cam chain tensioner yet it's a manual one so I'm not going to do that until I actually get the rockers in there and get the engine running because you got to get it warm so I'm going to do that uh, I got to put the car back on and that'll be really it so the other things I have here are uh, my GPS. I want to put a visor on it so it'll kind of block a little bit more sun. It's kind of a cheap GPS. I bought it for, I think, 50 bucks, but I can download tracks to it, so that's good. 
the windscreen angle. I'm thinking about pushing it forward just a little bit because I, I get a little bit of head buffeting since I'm so tall coming off of that. It's gotten better with the, vi or the uh, windshield down in the very low position here. But if it's up high, the wind just doesn't get up over the top of my head. So I don't know if I'm going to add some shims in the bottom to turn that angle more to shoot it up more or to put some shims up top here to kind of push it forward so then it may push the wind up over my head. If I move back on the seat, it's better, but it's just not comfortable back there for me. Uh, I did the head gasket, so that's done. I got brand new tires. I went with cheapo Shinkos here. They're uh, they're great tires. What are they? Shinko 2 Where the hell are they? Shinko something cheap. They were like 50 bucks a piece. Two forty four, Shinko two forty fours. I had them on my, uh, I had them on my TE five ten, and at about one hundred and ten, they're really shaky. But for fifty dollar tires, they wore pretty good. All that I'm trying to do is commute, and the tires on here, the D six oh sixes, they're super chopped. You can see the profile here. The rear ones, pretty far gone too. So I, I just commute on it and I do a little bit of dirt roads here and there. So I want a little bit of an aggressive tire, but enough that going down the road, I'm not going to feel the knobs. So I went with those. I liked them. I've run them before. They probably wear out in about a year, but who cares? They're a hundred bucks for a set and that's, that's pretty much it. So uh, I might check back in tomorrow night. When I get some more things done, I might be doing those tires tomorrow night. So I guess I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.